National Mirror newspaper. There are several headlines here, but the boldest one here says, again, they are reiterating that DSS arrest Dasuki as AFCC picks Dr. Kwesi, ex secretary Governor Bafarawa, who Shomole justifies Dasuki's prosecution. That's on pages three of the National Mirror newspaper, still on the arms purchase scandal. Uh, other stories here, Kachiku promise end to fail scarcity, pages seven. Kachiku promise end to fail scarcity. And uh, this is from the Senate President. It says, count me out of arms deals. That's on page 13. Other stories, National Assembly passes 574.5 billion naira supplementary budget. That's on page 5. The writer says, wants ministries, agencies to spend funds judiciously. NEMA records 410 births, 187 marriages in IDP camps. That's on page 12. Amazing. NEMA records 410 breaths, 187 marriages in IDP camps. Two other stories here. Nigeria loses five women early to childbirth, and that's from UNICEF, page 2 of the National Mirror newspaper. Court, de court decides Gilbert Tussle on Friday. That's from the Kogi State. Group urges AGF, INEC boss, to resign. That's still on pages 4. Kachiko promises to end fail scarcity. Fail scarcity has been on the lips of virtually every Nigerian in the past weeks. I mean, in Lagos State, it's been very crazy. The queues haven't ended. The queues get tougher, more challenging every day. I mean, this was uh, uh, part of the issues we had in the last administration. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I almost could not complete my statements without making reference to the past administration because it was just a few months of handover. In this administration, too, the problems of fail scarcity have persisted. Yesterday, lots of Nigerians took to social media to talk about power supply. Yes, the ministers have just been appointed. We need to give them time. But in all of this, where do you stand on both sides of the divide, especially the fuel scarcity saga? It, it is very unfortunate that, as a nation, we are still experiencing fuel scarcity up to today. Oh, well, so we are the number what? six uh, largest. Now, when uh, the doctor Kachuku says, in a short while, fuel. How short is the while? How short is the while? That's number one. Number two, is it a short term? approach that you are using, the refineries are not working. And the refineries, as far as I'm concerned, will not work as far as they are being managed by the government. They will never work. If it works, it will not work at optimum capacity. The important thing is to have a long-term policy open up the system, deregulate that sector. But that would take time, don't you think? Of course. That's a long-term plan. Of course. If we had done that since, by now, we could have been we could have been reaping the dividends. Yes. And there's this issue of the turnaround maintenance of the refinery. Is that turnaround Somebody maintenance? was saying, what are they turning around? Because they around the turnaround <laughs> it looks so it will not work okay. as long as it is managed by the government. Go and write it down. But we were also told that those refineries we have now, they are ob obsolete. Outdated. Of course. Uh, they are outdated. So, so uh, why are you going to spend billions of dollars in turning it around? What are you turning? Okay, now let's assume that uh, you're the minister for petroleum for just one week. Uh, what would you be uh, doing? That would be too short. <laughs> 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 well, the important thing is that we should look at deregulating the sector. The reason why we are having this scarcity is because of subsidy. Because we import almost 90% of the petroleum products. And the landing cost is more than the regulated price. So that is why you now have to subsidize. Now, if you say you are not going to subsidize, how can I bring in a product and sell at a lower rate? No businessman would do that. But if you, if you de-regulate, allow the market forces to play, if I bring in my product, if it is 100 naira, and I sell 100 naira, 100, that's mine. We know countries who are specialized in building refineries and um, some economic analysts have argued, have uh, posited or suggested that why don't you allow these countries yeah. come into Nigeria, give them it, a time it, frame, it build refineries. It is, not just, it is not just a country. There are different types of refineries. You have the, the modular refineries, which are easier to set up. They are smaller. And then you have the other refineries that use the catalyst system. That ones are bigger ones. So you can you can license investors to set up 
a modular refineries. It will be cheaper and faster. Okay, thank you very much. You have um, another paper. Okay, um, um, Trust. the next paper I'm taking is the Daily Trust newspaper. And there are several headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper, but this one is still on the arm deals. Um, this is the final paper I'm taking actually. It says Dasuki Bafarawa Dokbasi arrested. That's on page five. Dasuki Bafarawa Dokbasi arrested. That's on page five. Court stops prosecution of synagogue. That's on page four. The writers say trustees and engineers to be prosecuted. Great Green Wall platform. That's on page fifteen. Get more details of the Great Green Wall platform on page sixteen. Well, other stories here from the editor's choice. Reps uncover irregularities in NERC severance package. That's on page eight. Court stops federal government from seizing Kashamu's properties. That's on page four. And this is on the all subsidy. Federal government to pay marketers this week. That's on page 23. The Daily Trust is one of such papers that keeps tab on the cheap up girls. It's been 597 days since over 200 school girls were taken by Boko Haram. Okay, let me just them. quickly take a look at the front page of the authority. Uh, the Dasuki Dopesi Bafaro arrest uh, has dominated virtually every paper. Uh, PDP condemns action, Nigeria returning to dictatorship. Uh, this is coming from Zerkeme, by Zerkeme. And pro Biafra protesters block Niger Bridge, storm Abuja. And still on the front page of the authority, Nigeria to pursue price stability at OPEC says catch group. And Senate passes 575 billion naira supplementary budget. But again, we'll just end on a lighter note, but on a social note. Um, 400 and, 410 births. 187 marriages, recording IDP scams. Uh, Prince is like, uh, they seem to be having a, a wonderful time. And yeah. the IDP. The life, 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 life continues. Life, life continues. He life, only life the midst of all the crises. You see, the crises sometimes are, are not supposed to mind you, but to make you. So it all depends on your mind, your state of mind when you are in crisis. That is what makes it is either you are mad or you are made. I wonder what to be the names of those children uh, being given birth to in a time and of crisis. Yes, and, <laughs> and, 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 and don't be surprised, yes. some of those children will become leaders in Nigeria. You know, uh, Benjamin Peters, I think this buttresses the fact that Nigerians are very resilient people. In the face of challenges, we're always smiling, we're always having fun, we're always strong. So, so some people will you. tell you that when Nigerians, uh, when you push them to the wall, yes, instead of them running the back, they, they will go through, through the wall. wall. <laughs> <laughs> they don't bounce back. Thank you very much. Thank Sorry. you very Thank much, <laughs> Okay, it's still AM chat, and I'm sure uh, you can get, get out there, pick any of the papers to get the details yeah. of um, the stories okay uh it's still am chart i'm still here with um my twin wolfie samuel uh but though she doesn't look like me <laughs> okay we'll be right back stay tuned
All right, you're still watching a um, chat on MITV, and um, it's been quite interesting. I'm sure uh, you gain one or two things from uh, the press uh, newspaper review this morning. Interestingly, a uh, very good friend, Alan is still with us in the house, Prince Eshet Eshet. I want to thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you for very still much. finding time uh, to be with us because there's a very it is national service definitely it's, uh, the, the, there's a serious issue on ground and um, that issue is what has dominated all the front pages of the newspaper. Wofa, what do you, you say to this? It's, it's, it's really been dominating on all the pages of the newspapers, like yeah. Benjamin Peter said. I mean, talking about the arms deal that went on with the ex NSA, the ex national security advisor Dasuki. Now, he has been arrested. He was arrested yesterday. I hope I got that right. Yeah. The, 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 the proceedings for his arrest, too many questions around it. A lot of pundits would say the procedures weren't followed. Some would query that it doesn't matter how the procedures were done. What is most important is that he was arrested. He should be questioned, and if he's found prosecuted, face the law. So I want to start with this question around his arrest, the, um, the, the proceedings leading to his prosecution. At the time he was arrested, why must it be the early hours of the day? The proceedings that led to his arrest, are you comfortable with that? I don't have any... You see, there is no constitutional time, time frame or legal time frame that the security agencies or investigative agencies can effect arrest. They can effect arrest at any time, whether it is in the daytime or in the evening or at night or early hours of the morning. So the time frame should not be an issue because you cannot go to court and say, because I was arrested in the morning or early hours of the morning, it is against my constitutional right as guaranteed. You cannot. So the time of arrest itself, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, um, Dr. C uh, is a chairman of DAC Communications. Uh, uh, we also have um, Sarah Key, the Senate Sarah president, president involved. And um, of course, again, we're also seeing that uh, ex-top military men have been uh, called to question. As a legal practitioner, um, of course, you said you're not guilty until you've been proven innocent. Uh, innocent. No, now, you're not. You're not. You're, 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 you're not guilty. You're, 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 you're not guilty. You are not guilty of right right from the start. Proving innocent. You are, you, you are oh, innocent. You are innocent right from, from the proven, beginning okay. until yeah. you are proven yeah. guilty. Now, looking at um, the sensitivity in terms of positions of these people that have been uh, involved in this deal, uh, to clear the air. Some people have argued that um, there will be need to call the ex-president as well, not necessarily uh, EFCC, but to also clarify from a former president, Good Lord Jonathan, uh, because he was the captain of the, uh, uh, of the ship at that point in time. Do you think Jonathan will be in a better position to clear the air on this? Number one. Ex-president Goodluck Jonathan was the president and commander in chief, who was the person in charge. Yeah. The entire box stops at his table. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but in running a government, it is not the president that does everything. It's not the president that does everything. Because this is a very I'm coming. Issue, I'm, yeah. coming. I'm coming. I will come to answer your question very politely. Okay. The president does not go out to do everything. People do other things, depending on the offices they occupy. All right? But then, as a chief executive, you are responsible for everything that takes place in your own government. The good, the bad, the ugly. You have to take responsibility. Okay. That is not to mean that you are guilty. Responsibility in terms of the fact that you were the president, and if anything had gone wrong, whether you knew about it or you did not know about it, you have to take responsibility. Now, if there is need, I think, like I've always said, we shouldn't be very sentimental about these matters. We should be very objective. And that is why the agencies that are doing investigations should also do proper investigations. If there is need for a former president to answer questions, the former president can be invited. Explanations could be sought. In other countries, we have seen former presidents being tried for criminal offenses. So, but the thing is this: 
it will not be proper for, for us to make a hasty conclusion on the matter. On the matter. It is better for the necessary security agencies, investigative agencies, to investigate get the and get right. the facts right. That is, you see, the reason why some other crimes are able to prosecute a criminals is because they do proper investigation before arresting people. But in Nigeria, we always rush to arrest before, before going to do investigation. Prince Shades, we're going against the backdrop of what you've said. You said if it's possible for the former president to be invited, he should make himself available and be invited. But then there's, there was a report that came up while this issue uh, started initially that the last time Nigeria ever purchased arms or had new arms was in 1993, mm -hmm. in the days of um, Shagari. Now, if we were to invite the president, don't you think there could be need for other presidents to also be invited, the likes of uh, President oh, Michel Kunopas, oh, John, so many easy. others? <laughs> Since we hadn't purchased arms since after 1993, would you say the monies are located to other administrations said, before President Jonathan? Is, like I said, you don't have to limit it to only one person. If there is need to recall all the former presidents and heads of states in Nigeria to answer questions on certain arms deals, everybody should go and answer questions. You don't see politics coming into play? I'm coming. I'm coming. That is why I said before you go to do that, you must do proper investigation and get your facts correct. It is not just about going to uh, boggle people from their houses and, and branding names and figures and the rest. By the next day, we hear enough. There should be proper investigation. Even if the investigations are properly done, don't you see factors of politics playing? Plain? I mean, we're Nigerians, and so so far, a lot of people have their opinions about Nigeria. There's been there so many nothing, other cases. There is nothing, there is nothing that we, we don't play uh, politics within Nigeria. We'll bring in politics, we'll bring in ethnicity, we'll bring in religion. Okay, uh, on a final note, uh, Princess Shek, just That's tell us, uh, with, with the way the case is going, um, a lot of people have divergent views. Uh, at the end of the day, what do you think this will turn out to be? My only advice is this. In as much as we all agree, what I mean by we, most Nigerians agree that, look, we should bring corruption to the barest minimum. We should recover loots from the past leaders, established ones, not just going about arresting people and harassing people. We must also be very conscious of the fact that, you know, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. In as much as we would cherish a situation where corrupt leaders are brought to book, we must also be very vigilant before we slide into a detection. And that is the more reason why due process of law must be followed at all stages. All right, thank you very much, uh, Prince, uh, for your time. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very It's still AM chart, and we'll be right back after this time out. Uh, we understand uh, our guests are around. Uh, we're, taking, uh, we're taking a look at um, the educational sector. We'll be right back.